Hey yo fellow investors, how are you doing? My name is Stein and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're taking another look at one of the first companies we've ever talked about on this channel. And that was actually the video that showed me that this YouTube thing is actually possible. The company we are talking about is Gilad Satellite Networks or ticker symbol GILT. Back then the company was trading at around $11 and shortly after shot all the way up to almost $22 per share or a 2x return in just two weeks. With 2020 hindsight, those insane returns obviously didn't last. And now we're down to barely $9 per share. So today in this video, we're trying to answer whether anything changed with this company, whether it is still a good hold now, and whether you should buy Gilal Seda Networks at today's prices. And to answer those questions, first, what does Gilad Satellite Networks actually do? Second, why is the stock down so much? Third, my own price predictions and buy targets. That's it, that's the video. Please do keep in mind that I'm no financial advisor and the following are just my opinions. Now, let's go. So to start off, what does Gilad Satellite Networks actually do and why are they an attractive company to invest in? So for the less techie people, I'll try to keep this as simple as I possibly can. So you are watching this video on a device, maybe your smartphone, maybe your laptop, desktop or even the TV. But one thing is for sure, that device is connected to the internet. And this might be cable, Wi-Fi, 4G or maybe even 5G. See, more and more devices are being connected to the World Wide Web every single day. And we need faster technologies for all those connections. And one of those future connections is 5G. And it's going to be big. By the way, I encourage you to look into the trends like the Internet of Things or the increased smartification of everything around us. Read some articles and search, but the main premise we've just discussed. So the main premise is the following. More and more devices are connecting to the internet every single day. And for all those devices, we need better infrastructure. See, the internet is kind of similar to the public road network. As the backbone of a network, we have the highways. Highways connect to each other, but also to smaller regional roads, which in turn connects to cities and villages and neighborhoods. The internet works very similar actually, and this is where Gilad Satellite Networks comes in. In this analogy, Gilad is the company that enables others to use the highway or even construct a highway of their own. So Gilad is a really useful company and is much needed today. See, Gilad differentiates their company in five main categories. So first, cellular, and this is where their 5G and cellular or mobile tech resides. Think of this as the connections needed for smartphones. Second, mobility. This is a big business for Gilad, and this is where they enable in-flight, in-train or in-ship connectivity. So this is stuff you use when you're browsing the web on an aeroplane. Third, residential broadband. See, about half of the world population still isn't connected to the internet, and that's a huge market potential. And Gilad is actually seeing this opportunity. And they will try to supply as many of those people as possible with cable internet. Oh, and by the way, this is the same technology that enables your Wi-Fi at home. So fourth, enterprise. So for example, for offshore or even remote areas. And lastly, government and defense. Gilad is a huge supplier for all kinds of countries around the world since they are specialized in creating a connection in remote areas. So from this list we can see that Gilad is extremely diversified in the network space and they tend to anyone willing to connect to the web. And they seem to be extremely competitive in the space too. Just take a look at this list. So these are all the new contracts Gilad was able to sign. Just this year, they were able to sign 11 different multi-million dollar deals in all kinds of different spaces. And by the way, those 11 multi-million dollar deals will probably make a huge bump in their revenue. And I can say that so confidently because for the year 2020, Gilad managed to do a total of $165 million in revenue. So 11 times a multi-million dollar contract will probably result in a huge percentage increase in revenue. So after this video, aside from doing more research into the internet sector and Gilad's competitiveness, I would advise reading into their management team. Get a feel for them, watch some interviews and read their annual reports. 
Are they honest? Do you like their decisions? That's something I cannot decide for you and it's therefore for you to research. But okay, since Gilot is such a great company, why is the stock down so much anyways? Well, nobody knows for sure, of course, but I think there are a couple of reasons. First, the whole market is down. Well, not the whole market exactly, but growth stocks for sure are. See, this is the inflation felt by us consumers, workers and normal people. At least this is the US data for the dollar. So we can see that inflation has sharply increased compared to last April to today. And some smart people think it's transitory, so the inflation will go away soon. And others think it's here to stay for a while at least. And I do not think that's the point of this video. And I do not think that I'm the most qualified person to tell you all about what will happen to inflation in the future. Maybe check out Meet Kevin if you find all this interesting. Anyways, this inflation thing matters because of the following. If inflation goes up, bonds go up too. Bonds are basically loans we investors give to companies or even governments. And bonds, well, bonds are seen as zero risk. So if you want the least risk in the market, you buy bonds and accept the modest to low returns. And logically, stocks are compared to bonds since stocks are riskier and should therefore give more returns and bonds are less risky and should give less returns so if the return from bonds go up the risk-free return rate goes up you get more from bonds so obviously the more risky stocks are less attractive and stocks are normally compared to a risk-free rate especially when using something like dcf or discounted cash flow the higher the returns of the bonds the lower the current valuation of stocks should so, because of the high transitory or even permanent inflation, growth stocks like Gilot are down. This is logical, kind of sad if you're invested, but I think this will be short-lived. Even if inflation sticks around for years. Once Gilot rakes in the high returns we are expecting them to do, in just a couple of years, the valuation of this company will surely go up. Okay, so besides this big downtrend felt by other growth stocks, well, according to Google anyways, the hype for Gilot Seller Networks was largest back in February. So a lot of new hype investors came into the stock around the time I published my last video on the 1st of February. And by the way, I'm not saying that's because of my video, it just happened to be around the same time. And all these Reddit type investors caused the stock to absolutely skyrocket. And this skyrocketing was quite unsustainable. Slow and steady wins race, especially with stocks. And we should have done a lot of more consolidation during the uptrend. But we didn't and we're feeling the effects of that today. And the last important reason I can name for the recent downturn might be their slightly lackluster performance throughout 2020. And although I do not think we should judge the companies too much because of the lost revenue and earnings throughout the pandemic, it certainly does matter. And a lot of investors might find this dip in net profits to the negative around Q3 2020 quite scary. But I, as a long-term investor, look ahead and I see all the new contracts Gilot was able to add since then. And I also see an almost all-time high trailing 12-month EPS of 76 cents. So no, I'm not that worried about Gilot in the long run. Of course, anything can happen on the short term and the stock might drop all the way to $1 per share. Or it might not. Nobody knows and anyone telling you is lying. However, what we can do is look at the far future and that will do now. So in my past videos, I already did price predictions with a 10 year time frame. So for the year 2031. And the main premise of these calculations were the following. We started out with an EPS of 66 cents, which was current back then a growth rate of 20% for the following decade, which I still think is doable, and the P-ratio of 30, which I also see as attainable too. And that actually got us to a fair share price today of almost $30, and a future price target in 2031 of almost $125 per share. And that effectively gave us a heavy buy target of $15 per share, with a 50% margin of safety, of course. And now with a lower current share price, we can actually change these numbers to make this investment even less risky. So let's first update the EPS to the current 75 cents trailing 12 month EPS. Then growth rate. We can actually lower this bad boy all the way down to just 15%. 
which is just so doable in my opinion. And we can even lower the B ratio to 25, which is also fairly conservative for such a tech company. Anyways, those numbers get us to a future, so 2031 share price of about $76 per share. And a fair share price today of about $19, and a margin of safety or heavy buy target of $9 per share. So the way I see it is the following. At the current share price of $9 per share, the company only needs to grow at 15% a year, which is just so doable in my opinion, and they need to hit a PE of 25, which they've done so many times in the past already. And if they just meet those two requirements, they will return a 15% a year compounded easily. In fact, for that 15% a year, the company has a margin of safety of 50%. And if they do manage to grow at 20% or even higher, as predicted earlier, well, 10x returns in 10 years or even higher are totally possible. So let's go back to the questions asked at the start of this video. First, has anything changed with this company? In my honest opinion, if anything, Gilad only got better. Second, is it still a good hold or even a buy today? Well, it's an even better buy today than on the 1st of February. The price is lower, you got less risk when investing and the potential returns are higher. Awesome. And if you did buy in previously, for example at $14 per share, well, I'm no financial advisor of course, but if the story doesn't change, I'm certainly not selling. I am holding for sure. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like and maybe even subscribe. Comment down below what you want to talk about next and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.